Okay, now let's uh, wrap up with some uh, concluding uh, thoughts. In this chapter, with dynamic, uh, with the dynamics of the desert in mind in the previous chapter that we looked at, <coughs> we've addressed some of the physical mechanisms that determine the major arid and pluvial regions on the planet. From the desert mechanism, uh, I hope you remember that actually deserts are heated greatly and they have a, so, uh, the heat low. We talked about the Arabian heat low and the exit uh, exhaust, lateral exhaust, for example. Other deserts also have lows. And, of course, the land, uh, rainy regions also have low pressure because rain is associated with cyclonic circulation and low pressure. Uh, whereas the oceans, uh, dry regions have high pressure. So it's a contrast that's kind of interesting. Uh, in the meantime, ITCZ may lie off the equator in regions of cross-equatorial pressure gradients uh, that force the advection of wrong signed absolute vorticity across the equator. We already talked about 8 hour F negative B uh, less than 0 being an uh, important condition for inertial instability which drives convection. Pressure gradient is the result of slowly varying SSD differences. We haven't explained where that comes from, but given that distribution and the associated pressure gradients, we built our uh, dynamics. Such an intrusion is inertially or symmetrically unstable. We talked about that. The CEPG, cross equatorial pressure gradient, is not sufficient since static stability on the warm side of the equator uh, must not be too great if the advection of vorticity happens and then inertial instability has to kick off convection. Such a stipulation renders the cross equatorial monsoon flow inertially stable uh, even though uh, the region possesses uh, the strongest CEPG on the planet in uh, the western Indian Ocean that we talked about a few times. The great cloud bands are the predominant precipitation features of the southern hemisphere. There is some indication that northern hemisphere also contains a cloud band with similar features to those in the uh, no, uh, southern hemisphere. We call the Mayu Bayu uh, cloud band or the front. Um, equatorial part of the bands appear anchored in a warm pool region or a location of monsoon rainfall extending towards high latitudes so this is uh, some processes we looked at uh, simple first order dynamical arguments were used to explain the orientation of the thermodynamical balance changes from diabatic limit in the low latitudes vertical motion and the diabatic heating to advective limit as the zonal winds increase at higher latitudes okay uh, high frequency variance changes from 20 to 40 days in the equatorial regions of uh, the bands to high frequency multi-day variance at higher latitudes. So we saw transients in the ITCZ, uh, which had nice interseasonal variability in the lower uh, latitudes and became uh, multi-day uh, high frequency variabilities at uh, higher latitudes. So we looked at the four to eight day variability in the ITCZ. The extra tropical variants appear to be strongly modified by la uh, longitudinal variability of the basic flow, the stretching that we talked about, showing contraction of a longitudinal scale and slowing down of phase and group speeds, which comes down to uh, trapping energy. In chapter 11, we developed uh, an argument to suggest that within the westerly duct or tropical upper tropospheric trough, Potential vorticity was funneled towards the equator through reoccurring breaking Rossby waves uh, at the exit of the jet. You always had these instabilities and breaking Rossby waves, which goes into the baroclinic instability that uh, we had mentioned before, that were generated in the unstable extratropical jet stream and propagated eastward uh, in the outflow uh, region of the jet. The jet itself is the result of the poleward advection of potential vorticity by the tropical and subtropical heat sources and the reoccurring high frequency waves complete the potential vorticity balance by advecting potential vorticity back towards the equator. So Hadley cell uh, advecting uh, PVS to the north and then these uh, breaking Rossby waves bringing it back south with easterl westward advection by the easterlies and then funneled back towards uh, higher latitudes. In essence, the ducts and the toots, <laughs> toots 
completed the PV balance circuit. So the idea of sea surface temperature, warmest sea surface temperatures being uh, uh, the home for ITCZ obviously is not uh, the complete story. We uh, saw the zonal contrasts uh, and regions where cross equatorial pressure gradient strongly corresponded to uh, insta inertial instabilities, but in the western central Pacific where the uh, zero absolute vorticity line remained close to the equator, but uh, convection happened to the north anyway away from the equator. And we raised the possibility of easterly waves coming from uh, the uh, eastern Pacific and maybe influencing the convective processes uh, in these regions where the cross equatorial pressure gradient is not that strong. Western Indian Ocean was special where the cross equatorial pressure gradient is strong but it's in a statically stable region so inertial instability doesn't do much in terms of producing convection and rain. So that's the long chapter. I hope uh, you get the mo most of the, the basic uh, dynamics, the equations. Uh, I did uh, kind of take a shortcut but you can go through the book and uh, learn it if you need that to be uh, your major focus, okay?